because when I first started, I spent, I blew through money because that's what they told me They're, like, once I started making money wholesaling, I started with zero dollars, but once I started making money, I literally just blew the money. Like on mailers, I would spend it on pay per click. Right. I'd spend it on text. So I think that happens to a majority of people. Like they go, they try cold calling or do texting or doing something for free, and they realize this isn't working like I thought it would. Let me spend money because that's what everyone says. Like market, and then they blow their money marketing. We're here Good now. Work. We have, we have uh, the amazing Nathan Payne. I met him off of, or I s started following him on social media and I thought he was, a, he seemed like a really, really cool guy. So I really wanted to interview him on my podcast to see his story, all of that type of good stuff. Right. And, and yeah, I just wanted to meet you and, you know, get to talk to you and all of that good stuff. Appreciate it. And yeah, that was basically it. So real quick for my audience, just give like a quick bio of your real estate journey, like what you've accomplished. Just a real quick bio before we get really into it. Yeah. So quick bio about me. I got started about five, six years ago into wholesaling. Started with zero dollars, no money at all. I told my wife, hey, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to go all into wholesaling. And I had a business partner at the time, like we both went into it and my wife's like, that's fine. Just, uh, just figure it out. But just, you know, just go ahead. Right. But with no money. Right. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I can figure it out. And so we did, we, we were knocking doors. We got a, one of our first deals from knocking doors. We were cold calling the expired listings list. Got a deal from that mail. I mean, you name it. We tried everything. And it was like, literally like this for several years, just up and down, up and down, trying to do deals. And then eventually stabilized, figured it out. And then what happened is in 2000, well, a year, a year or so ago, the interest rates really went up in Utah where we were doing most of our deals. And my business partner's like, Hey man, you know what? It's getting harder to sell deals. I'm not really feeling this anymore. So he dipped and I went off and I was like, Hmm, what has been the easiest way? My partner's gone. So what, what's been the easiest way to do deals? Well, the easiest way that I've been doing deals is through networking, through my cash buyers, bringing them deals from other wholesalers or other agents and just selling them that way, the painless way, the easy way. And that's all I do right now. And that's like, I used to have a big team. I don't anymore. It's just me, a virtual assistant. And yeah, it's pretty simple. No, literally no overhead, no marketing costs and do a couple deals a month. Nothing crazy. Not like what I was doing before, but I love my the lifestyle I have and I'm not really worried about much when it comes to the real estate side. So yeah, that's me. That's I love that. I love that for so many different reasons. First off, I'm the same as you. I do all my deals through real estate agents and other wholesalers because you're right. It is the painless way. It's the easier. It's way easier than direct to seller, right? So yeah, like I love that because I really like the fact, first off, that you're super comfortable with the fact that it's like, hey, we tried to do this big team. I didn't like it as much. I'm not into it. And said, we just scaled down to just me and a virtual assistant. And that's what I'm really enjoying, right? Like I'm enjoying doing that instead of doing like the, the huge business route, yep. not needing to do that necessarily as much. What inspired that decision to just be like, you know what, let's just go down like the me and one virtual assistant and like not go super crazy with like uh, crazy team. Yeah, man. Lifestyle, lifestyle, hundred percent. Because when I had the bigger team, we were spending about 30 to $50,000 a month on marketing. It like, you felt like if you didn't get on every lead that you were spending $500,000, pay-per-click, whatever, that you were like burning your money. Right. So like sometimes my team wouldn't want to answer a call. So I felt like I had to call the, the, the lead and it's just, I was working nights, weekends. It wasn't like a, just a, you know, nine to five job, which, you know, not being an entrepreneur really isn't, but still my wife was like, yeah, you're always working, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't feel, I felt like I was, yeah. And I wasn't as happy, but now it's like, Hey man, I don't have to make 30 to 40,000 or whatever to just cover marketing expenses. Not alone on top of that, like you have overhead, you got office, you have all this stuff. So I was like, Hey man, this, this lifestyle is a lot better. So to answer your question, it's just lifestyle and just being okay with the fact that I don't need to tell people that my business is uh, revenue and generating millions of dollars to feel like I'm, I'm doing something like, yeah, I don't make millions of dollars right now, but I get to keep instead of like 20, 30% profit, I get to keep like way more of it, you know? Yeah, no, 100%. And I feel like this should just be known to people. I mean, for me, right? Like I'm, I have a team right now. It's not like a huge team or anything, but I've got like 
employees and lots of VAs and all that stuff. And I'll be honest, like I'm there, there, it's like, you have to either get to like 5 million in revenue, five to 10 million where it starts becoming worth it, or you're making probably less or, or around the same as you're making if you're just a solopreneur. To this day, the most money to me was when it was just me and another VA, right? I see. So in the in the end, like I totally get it. I think it should be promoted more. The idea of like, hey, you don't have to create a crazy business. You can just create like a really simple one and be super happy and make a freak ton of money, right? Um, and still have like an amazing lifestyle and all that stuff. So I just want to say like I I love that first off because too many people are trying to make the big business and it's just not worth it for mm. a lot of other humans, right? So so yeah, man, I told you this like when I was going to the question I was going to start with was when you were just starting out, it's in wholesaling real estate. What were your biggest fears and how did you overcome those fears? Biggest fears. You know what? I'll be honest, like I'm not flexing on anyone, but I just wasn't scared because I came from the door. So I'll, I'll just tell you a little bit about my background. So I'm from the church. I go to the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And people call us Mormons. So when I went on a mission, went up from 19 to age 21 for two years, I went on a mission where I would just approach people on the street every day about Jesus. I would just talk to people about Jesus. So you kind of get rid of like fear right. pretty, pretty quickly. You're like, I'm not really worried because if someone doesn't attack me or, or hurt me for two years from like just approaching them randomly, I'll probably be okay. And after that, after my mission, I went to college and I started doing door to door sales, selling Dish Network, door to door, direct TV. And I would, I had a gun pulled on me and like door to door, just some crazy stuff happened. So wasn't really too worried. I didn't die. I'm fine. So when it came to wholesaling, I was like, Hey, it's just a different thing. I just need to talk to people about selling their houses. So I wasn't too scared or worried about that. I, I kind of knew from years of approaching people and talking to people that nothing bad can happen to you. So that's, that's kind of wasn't too worried. I will say when I was calling the, the fear or the, the worry I had was like not knowing to say the right thing and like fumbling, but that wasn't like like a fear that was just like being uncomfortable, but I knew like through practice and doing it over and over again, you master any skill. So that that's probably the one thing is like, man, I don't feel comfortable talking about to the seller and acting like I'm going to buy their house, you know, that, that whole rigmarole, but that I would say those were it, like just talking not knowing what I was talking about. Gotcha. Which makes sense. I mean, I feel like that's everyone's first one, right? So when you were like, how did you overcome that? Like, like, I mean, obviously let's just, let's go back to, let's start with the missionary stuff because mm -hmm. that's sales in and of itself. Right. And you're really developing that skill in the first place. How did you overcome, let's say going up to people and talking about Jesus when, you know, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like, I don't know where you, where were you, where were you doing the missionary work? I know you guys go all over the place. Yeah. The yeah. Time. I was, I was called to serve in Portland, Oregon. So, or I was in, oh. the, in the surrounding areas in that area. So that's like an interesting one. Cause it's a Christian country too. So they know about Jesus, right? Or yeah, I think yeah. they know about Jesus. What was, how did you overcome the idea of like knocking on doors and like, like, what did you, did you have any techniques or were you just like, screw it? I'm just going to do it. Cause I got it right now. Well, on the mission, they kind of give you an idea of like, what, what's, how do you approach people? You open, you they call the, what we, we did inspired questions, like questions that are inspired from God and like that get people to think like, Hey, do you, have you ever thought of where you, you came from before this life and why you're here and where you're going after, you know, you die? Like those are inspired questions. So that's kind of how I, I got ready for that. And, and I translate that into wholesaling, like, Hey, I'm, I'm in the neighborhood. Have you ever thought about selling or do you know anyone that is? So just asking questions, not being pushy, not being like, Hey, I'm here to buy your house. So yeah, just approaching it that way and understanding that it's probably gonna be a no through doing sales and doing this. You, you almost get in your head like, Hey, I'm always going to get a no. <laughs> so I just have to like smile and, and keep going and overcome the objection. But it's not that would I would just say that it's just be expecting the no, but don't like let it destroy you or, or like really bring you down. Gotcha. And then like, what skills do you feel like missionary work? How that translated to wholesaling, right? Was it like literally missionary work and then right after wholesaling? No. So I, do you mean like, did I go right from being a missionary to wholesaling? Is that what you're yeah. saying? 
No. So I went on my mission for my, when I was 19 to 21 years old and then I got into wholesaling. I'm 32 now. So I got into wholesaling when I was like 27. So I, I I went to college and did the door to door thing for like six years and then got into wholesaling. So the skills that translated from missionary work or door to door were just like understanding that it takes a lot of no's to get a yes. (laughs) And you have to learn through trial and error and the furnace, the fire affliction, whatever to progress and be better. So like if you suck at pitching novations right now, or if you suck at talking to agents, you're going to suck until you get better, like until you do it enough where you can improve and progress. So that for me, it, that's, that's all I, that's the skill set that I learned is just like, Hey bro, it just takes time. Um, maybe someone's way better than you. And it's not because they're more skilled. It's just, they've done it more. They have more reps. Yeah. 100%. I talked to my salespeople a lot about that. How it's like, you guys aren't like actually any better than me. I've just done this for so much longer than you. That's literally the only difference in the end. Right. It's like, I, I can give you guys pieces of advice. I can give you guys advanced sales technique, but you're just going to keep getting better and better the longer you stay here. Right. And so it's the same thing with content too. Like I think Alex Hermosi was talking to Grant Cardone about like content. And this is before Hermosi got big and Grant Cardone's like, dude, look, the reason why I'm so much bigger than you is like, come and look at my account. And he had like 10 times the amount of videos that Hermosi had. So he's like, Hey, it's not that I'm better than you. I just put out way more than you do. Right. And maybe I've been able to gain more fans and now I'm more popular. It's the same thing, whether it's like reps on cold calls, whether it's reps talking to agents, it's, it's just, Hey, you got to get better. You're going to get better by producing more and, and giving, taking more shots. Yeah. 100%. And then I also wanted to ask you about that because I find that What's also really interesting is like, you're very popular on social media, right? I mean, I found you off Instagram. I think you had like 80K followers or something like that. So what's interesting is, is the foreigners love me, bro. I don't know why the foreign people love me. It happens. I have, I have like a good, I think it's like, I got like 5% from the Philippines or something. I'm like, I think you guys are just BAs trying to get me to hire you or something like that. I don't know. I get nonstop messages like, Hey man, you you need me to, you need something like people are always asking. Right. It's crazy. But what I'm curious about, because it's so interesting to me, since you've decided on this lifestyle of just being like, hey, it's just going to be me and a BA. I'm happy here. Like, I don't really need to go absolutely insane with the wholesaling. For you, what are you trying to get out of the social media if you're not trying to grow a huge team? Like, for you, what do you want the social media to turn into? Because I find that really interesting. Yeah. So, the reason why I'm so heavy in, in telling people what I do about my lifestyle is because when I first started wholesaling, I did it all wrong. If if we talk about like my first deal I did, it's like the classic scenario of like everything that can go wrong if you wholesale the wrong way. And if you wholesale the way I teach you, the painless way, you won't have these issues. And and basically that's that's why I'm doing this is because when I first started, I spent I blew through money because that's what they told me. They're, like once I started making money wholesaling, I started with $0, but once I started making money, I literally just blew the money. Like on mailers, I would spend it on pay per click, right. I'd spend it on text. So I think that happens to a majority of people. Like they go, they try cold calling or do texting or do, doing something for free, and they realize oh, this isn't working like I thought it would. Let me spend money because that's what everyone says, like market. And then they blow their money marketing. So I, I th- my goal is to teach people how to do it the painless way, like the without blowing market marketing dollars, and I also like the, the proper way to go about it. And last part is I I do coach, I do teach, I mentor. When I joined any coaching program on my way up, it was always like I thought I was getting mentored by like the actual guy, the the influencer or whatever, like one-on-one. That's what I thought I was getting. Uh, That's what usually got pitched. And then I joined and then I'm like on a call with like a hundred people or like 30 people or whatever. And I have to wait like an hour and a half to talk to the coach to ask like one question. So it's just like, man, this is stupid. I just want a mentor. So what I provide is like a one-on-one mentorship. Like you have a question you got, you have a one-on-one mentor, like a mindset mentor and a a one-on-one real estate coach. Now I don't always do those uh, one-on-one sessions, but I have designated coaches that do because I know that's what I wanted. I just want a mentor, not a group, not a community. I want a mentor. So that's, that's why I'm so heavy on social. Interesting. So I, I, that is a really interesting perspective and I want to talk with you about it because for me, I've just, I've basically only been a part of communities and communities. I, I do find it annoying where it's like an hour and a half 
or whatever, waiting to get your question answered sometimes. But I've been part of communities like Sub2, Astro. I don't know if you've heard of these ones, but like they gave me personally what I needed. I, I never felt like, I felt like one-on-one -on -one mentors, they would help. But like, as long as I got the question answered, it was fine. What's your philosophy or what have you noticed where it's like, no, I want like a one, -on I want to be providing that one-on-one -on -one service. What is that like? What have you seen the difference in your students? Like, I find that just interesting because yeah, you're yeah. definitely one of the only people I know who does that. Yeah, I think it just depends on what the person wants. Like, I've talked to a lot of people that are part of communities like you've, you, you're talking about that, like, come on and talk to me. They're like, look, I just want someone that can answer my questions that can mentor me. So I think that and that's what I wanted. Like, for example, I joined Jerry Norton's program and shout out Jerry Norton, right. my, my main guy. And, you know, luckily I was able like me have a cool relationship and he, I would say he is my mentor, you know, obviously through the program he is, but like even deeper, like what I want. And, you know, it just depends what people, what they desire. Like if I would say you are probably a different breed or a different person than other people that probably need more handholding. There are a lot of people yeah. that are probably in those communities that don't want to speak up and say, Hey, I really want a one-on-one -on -one person, not just a community, but they're not saying anything because maybe they'll, they're afraid to just be open and honest and maybe they feel like they're going to get attacked. But I'd Fair. say if a majority of the people in there that aren't getting what they need or feel like they need, they, they'd rather have someone to talk to like one-on-one. -on -one. That's fair. No, I mean, I get it. I'm, I'm a pretty self-sufficient type of guy a lot of times. And I also only, I literally only need one question answered usually per week. Right. I don't usually, there's like one critical one. I do it and then I create a new problem. So it's interesting. I just find it, I, I find everything about you interesting, just so you know, the fact that you're one person you, with bro. a VA and you're like, I'd rather keep doing that. Your yeah. community sounds, or community slash mentorship program sounds very different. Almost everyone I've ever had around here is like, yeah, the one-on-ones, they, they can't scale it or anything, or it's really hard to, right? So it's, it's, it's just interesting. You're doing it, you're doing it your way, the way that works for you. Right. So yeah, man. Scale, I like that. Scale's like a bad word in my opinion, like a lot of the times, because sometimes people yeah. will try to scale and they're like, bro, you're not ready to scale. You just started a week ago. Like, don't think right. about scaling. Like you need to make money. Right. So, and I, that was my problem. Like as a brand new wholesaler, like every, every event, every community, whatever I went to, they'd be like scale, scale, scale. So I felt, I fell into that trap of being like, okay, well they said to hire a team. They said to get an office. They said to spend a ton of money and feed the people leads, but I hadn't developed as a leader yet, or as a business, like entrepreneur to even like manage a scaled company. So it just, Right. didn't work out. So I think a lot of the time is like the skill sets that are required to build a business like that and into scale. A lot of the students or the people learning brand new aren't ready. And that's kind of what they're being taught. And I think it's kind of hurting them before they are able to get there. Like, yeah, be consistent getting like one to two deals a month before like you try to hire like a squad, a team of people to call because you, you got to provide you got to provide leads for the people. You got to, you have a CRM, you have to know how to track, you have to know how to do data, uh, you know, b booking, like all this stuff is so important. But again, I think people want to scale because they, they want to get out of the, the dirty work. They're like, man, this sucks. Let me have someone else do it. And it's like, you don't really know how to hire, how to train people. Cause you haven't, you don't really, you haven't built the muscle yet. Yeah. 100%. And I totally, I 100 to 100% agree that like, People scale well way too quickly. They don't know what they're doing. It's it's a whole different skill to be able to do it on your own versus like scaling an entire team, right? And that and it gets like very very difficult to do that. And you have to hit like first off to be a successful wholesaler just on your own. You're in the top five percent of people who've ever tried this minimum. Then to have it work where you're not in the business at all like what everyone's quote unquote dream right you're the top one of one percent and even then they're spending years and years and making very little money in comparison to the person who's just going one just them and another virtual system because you get to keep almost all of the money right the way yeah. you're doing it which is the way that i do it too there's no marketing costs you're literally your overhead is just that va salary basically right mm -hmm. i can't even imagine if there's any more than that so when maybe that like happens, a, like maybe like a CRM that's like ninety seven bucks a month or something. <laughs> yeah, something like that, right? And then you're like, you can make like half a million to six hundred k, seven hundred k, and then keep like eighty percent of that or ninety percent of that. 
And then you've just made yourself a 500k like like job and you're never going to get that anywhere else. So yeah, man, I just I just love that. So okay, I've done both. totally. I've done both, so I know. Yeah, you know, I, I know what you actually right. like. I I even know about like large large real estate companies where the owner like that they make a million or two million, but they're making like two hundred fifty to four hundred thousand after everything. Now they're outside of the business, but still, it's like bro, that's a lot of risk, and you've had to spend a lot of time. Like I'm sure there's, you know, I just don't want to have to wait and build all that up to do that. I feel like I I don't need to wait that long, so. Yeah, one hundred percent. No, I totally agree. And like I said, like my first, the first, the year where it was just me and a virtual assistant. First year I ever did, I made like zero dollars. But then the second year, I made like three hundred fifty k to me. And I still haven't gone to that since then. Actually, trying to scale, it's always. Been I appreciate so your honesty, dude, because that's the same. Like when I was building, I think one year, like my best year, I was like close to a million in revenue with our mm -hmm. wholesaling company. But like taking yeah. home it was like splitting it because i had a business partner it was like right not 100, 150 exactly bro so it's just like, like that. This, this sucks <laughs> yeah like you yeah. just gotta you just gotta know right like for it for that to work you gotta get to like three four five six million dollars in revenue so like that's what has to happen for it to like actually work out otherwise if you're intent on wholesaling i think everyone should just wholesale and keep it as like one other person right yeah, like I think we, we know Brent Daniels, like he's got a he's got yeah. a good like a good squad, like a good solid team. It's a smaller team, I would say. Like it's not you yeah, it's not it like is. a giant sales floor. When Both I was people. building up, yeah, like when I was building my team up, like I was like trying to get as many as I could. Like you, you you just have to keep it small and you have to keep it tight and like you have to have good, good people if you're gonna do it. But if you're gonna like bring in like C players and not A players, then you're gonna you're gonna suffer because you're gonna have to be canon people, yeah. you're gonna be wasting leads. Anyway, I'm just giving everybody the juice right now. I don't know how deep we no, want to get. No, I agree. Here. No, I agree, bro. Who knows, mate? Like right now, I really like my business partner and A, it is working well and we are growing, right? But like I like I 100 percent like see the other side and I let people know it's like I tell people like a lot of times, like if you're making if you're if you're like like just realize for you to like scale a business and then get it to where it's like 300 through 400 500k a year to you like that means you're talking like three four five million so i just yeah no i think it's just good for people to know that right yeah so yeah man here's the thing i'm just gonna be i'm gonna also be devil's advocate right like in the terms of like what i think people who are watching who maybe are trying to scale a business like they're when they're thinking of like that lifestyle it's like okay but the issue is is Nathan, like how much are you working as a solo printer, right? Aren't I going to be working less as I hire more people who are going to be doing more of the job roles or is that wrong? Is that wrong thinking in your head? I don't know. Like I really enjoy what I do. So the time flies. I don't really look at it too much like, hey, I'd like to be working less. I, I will say when I was, you know, built, built the team, you're still working a lot. You have to make sure that, you know, your, your employees are working, they're there, they're hitting yeah. their goals. So and this is another thing, like I'm not doing this so I don't have to work and I wouldn't scale a business so I didn't have to work. Like I, I like working. It's, it keeps me busy. So I just do this because of the lifestyle. Like I get to spend time with my family. I, I believe like I just had a daughter, so I get to spend as much time with her as I want. I only work four days a week. I don't work on Monday. I get to spend all day with my baby on Monday. So it's, again, it's just more of like, hey, this time when I'm young or until like I'm 40 or 50, like that's probably the best time to spend with my family. And then obviously my daughter's going to be like, old. she's going to be out of here at the house. Then I can go grind when nobody wants to hang out with me when I'm an old geezer, you know, not, not, I'm not going to retire when I'm like, that's not my goal. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not trying to get out no, of work totally. later. I'm trying to get out of work, working that hard now. Yeah, no, totally. It totally makes sense. And honestly, like for the type of money you're probably making being a solopreneur, like it's also just, it's so worth it in the sense you can just do that. You don't have any business partners and all that stuff. Like it's, it totally makes sense, man. And yeah, I just, I like it a lot. Right. Cause like, yeah, you're right. I mean, people in this industry are lying. It's like, they're like, oh yeah, 2 million in revenue. It's like, great. How much did you keep? Wow. Right. That, you that's know? my, that's my message for everyone. Cause you know, we all see the big checks flashing like, Oh wow. You yep. made 80 mil, you ate 80,000, but it took a year for you to get that 80,000. And right. you spent like 20,000 on coaching, 60,000 on marketing, your opportunity cost. So like, I'm not poo pooing on people that do that. I'm just saying like, Hey, just be, let's be real with each other and say, Hey, you know, what are you really trying to accomplish? And if what you're trying to accomplish is scale, then 
freaking go for it. But just know it's going to take some time. And if you're looking to make money, then get to work. 100%. So cool, man. Well, I love that. And then, so let's go through your story a little bit, right? So you go through the story, you start out, how did you like find your business partner? I'm actually used to people taking a while to find a business partner. Like, did you instantly find this business partner or like what happened? Yeah. Great question. So it was just one of my roommates in college. In college, right. I was doing door to door, like I told you, and I was always trying to recruit because I built up teams and they sold with me in the summer. So I would always try to recruit my buddy I'd be like, bro, come and sell, man. You're gonna make some good money. It's we only have to work for a couple months. And he'd be like, nah, man, I'm gonna stay here and I'm gonna do real estate. So his dad was a wholesaler in Missouri. So he was doing lease options, like wholesaling in Idaho, where we went to college. And I would go sell and I'd be like, bro, you, he, we basically just try to recruit each other, right? Like try to get each other to work for together. So I never did. But after I graduated high, sorry, not high school, college, I was like, man, I don't want to do door to door anymore. And, but I was like, what's can make me good money with my sales skills. And I was like, real estate. Right. So then I called him and I said, Hey man, what are you still doing that? And he's like, nah, I got a tech job. I was like, well, let's, let's go all in, quit your job. I'll quit mine. Let's go all in on, you know, real estate wholesaling. And, and I didn't know anything about wholesaling other than like, let's go find someone who wants to sell. And he's like, okay, let's do it. So I brought him because I didn't know anything about real estate other than I had the hustle and the grind. And he, he had what I, I thought he knew more, but I found out quickly that he didn't know that much when we right. got together, but it was at least, it was fun to work with a buddy. And the reason why, again, I got a, a, a partner in the beginning immediately was because again, it's for me, it's more about like, the experience and the fun, not, not necessarily that it was fun, but like, I want to uh, enjoy my work life instead of just being like money, 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 money. It's more of like experience, learning, you know, networking, growing with others. So that's another reason why I chose to just work with them right off the bat. I love it. I love it so much. I love it. Do you have any last words? Like, do you have anything that people should check you out? I mean, everyone should go to Nathan. It's Nathan Payne on Instagram. Where should people go to find you? Where can they send you deals? Is there anything else they should check out about you? Like anything we should be plugging that's coming up or anything like that? Yeah. So I have a free masterclass that I do every Thursday that explains my model, like nice. exactly what I'm t teaching. It's at today at four, it's every Thursday. So it's today at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's free to join. It's at Painless Flipping. Pain, P A Y N E L E S S, painlessflipping.com. You guys can check that out. And YouTube is like where I really trying to grow because I like YouTube. It's one of the platforms I use. So if you just go Nathan Payne or Painless Flipping on YouTube, you can see like more of what I am about. I, I do a lot of what I say. I show my screen. I teach you how to do it. So if you want to learn how to do it, go subscribe and check out my, my YouTube channel. I would say those are the two places where I would want you to go. Go to Masterclass or go to YouTube. Either one's perfect to learn. And then you want to connect with me, just you know how to do it. You DM me on anything. Awesome, bro. Well, this has been an amazing podcast. Stay afterwards. There's some cool things. I want to talk to you about a few things too off the podcast, but are there any last words right now? I would just tell people that are getting into wholesaling to like, if you're getting into this because you're like, this is so easy, like any business that you're trying to learn, anything you're trying to do, it, it requires work and it's going to be tough in the beginning. Like I was talking to someone that wanted to get into wholesaling because they're getting out of car sales and like, yo, car sales sucks, man. Let me get into wholesaling. I'm like, hey, Mero, it's going to suck here too. That's just how it is. You've got to learn. You, you're you not going to be able to come in here and just crush it. Like you got to go through the, the, the fire, right? You got to get scorched a little bit. And yeah. so I would just let everyone know that, that it's important to have realistic expectations that uh, if you want to master any skill, you got to You're going to have to fail a little bit to master what you're trying to figure out. So totally so. makes sense. Nathan, it's been a pleasure, my man. I appreciate you guys next week. Same old, nothing crazy that next week, just cash flow and coffee, which is my podcast, 950 MST. If you guys want to come and ask questions, it's going to be my YouTube, which is just my name. And then We'll do another episode of Scorch of Fears next week with an awesome guest. Nathan, you've been awesome. This is episode 109. I'll see y'all next week. Let's freaking go.